Huh? That's what I call a slimming kind of a tool belt. Now, I've had the other kind. Uh, I've had the nylon ones, the big honking leather ones. Here's my collection right over here. This baby made me look like a wide load type of girl. And this was uh, actually my very first one, an even wider load, actually. I decided, enough of this. I'm sick of looking like a big old house trailer. So I'm going to make my own. So I did. And this is how it works. For example, mine has a, a sloping pocket thing happening. Not only a saucy line, but all the screws drop to one side, or the nails. So you're never going, like, feeling up your whole leg trying to find, you know, the two remaining screws in your pouch. And then on this side, I've got uh, room for hand tools and stuff. And this is my favorite part, OK? Ready? Ah! <laughs> is that hot or what? OK, see, this is the deal. You might want to put, uh, make five or six of these pouches if you're doing different jobs. And one's filled with finishing nails, and one's filled with, you know, number eight screws, exterior version. You know, it's a real geek factor I'm talking about in this belt. But you'll like it. OK, so I'm going to try working today with Ultra Suede, which is sort of a vegetarian model of the tool belt. It comes from Italy. It's way more expensive than suede. I got this whole big fat roll of suede for 20 bucks. And this little cheesy, tiny little, hardly a half a yard of ultra suede was 50 bucks. So my thought is, go to Goodwill, get an old ultra suede jacket that some big guy just doesn't want anymore, grew out of, or it just looked bad in the first place, and cut that up. All right, so I'll just show you uh, some suede or ultra suede cutting tips. First of all, raid your sewing basket, if you've got one, for a big, heavy, thick ruler and a rotary cutter. And the reason the ruler needs to be thick is because when this baby's sliding along the edge of the ruler, if you don't have a thick ruler, the, the blade can slip and you end up cr cutting across the ruler and you don't want your hand to get hurt. OK. Now, the dimensions. This is one long piece folded over, 19 inches long by 9 inches wide and I just folded it over and hemmed it with these little hammer rivets. Okay, This piece is a little bit different. It's another 9 inch wide piece, but it's only 11 inches long. See like this, 9 by 11. And this little funky piece is actually 7 by 11, and it just goes across like this and makes these two um, pouchy pockets. So basic construction, you can make them whatever size you want. I'm just telling you what I did. So. The ultra suede gets laid out. I'm going to fold it at a bit of an angle. See? Like this. And then I need to trim this half inch off and this half inch off. And that's going to get me down to that narrower profile that I was thinking of achieving. Like this. And just using the rotary cutter and the nice big fat ruler. one side and the other. And once that's trimmed up, we're ready to actually rivet the edges. And these hammer rivets are my favorite new thing. So I'm going to start at uh, on one side and then do the other side as well. And you'll need a leather punch. Now you can get the $100 model <laughs> and break it. Or you can get the $17 model. This is, um, this is a really nice tool to have. And all you do is you, you select the little rivets that you're going to be using. They're tiny little delicate things, OK? It's just a post and a little cap, a little bit of fuzz, too, just for fun. The cap goes over the post, and then you'll whack on it with a hammer. And that post gets smooshed up inside the cap. That's how a hammer rivet works. So let's just figure out how, and these are really tiny because the thickness you can see is not very thick. I'm just going to take the material in my hand and just punch it. OK. And see, I got a beautiful little hole there. And then another one on the other side. Well, the second one never really comes out 
properly, you always have to sort of pick it out with a fingernail. There it is, it's there. Then the post feeds through from the bottom to the top, like that. Then the little cap goes on like this. And this is the point at which you need to employ a little, this is called a baby anvil. And you use it like this to form a nice base for the thing. Otherwise, if you're just whacking it on wood, you end up bending the post. It doesn't work very well. So I just fit the lid over like that. And then this thing has a little concaved end. So that accepts the um, slight uh, convex surface of the uh, little head. And my hammer is right here. Now, you shouldn't really, I'm going to demonstrate this right now, but I should cover the end of my hammer with a little bit of leather because you want to transmit the force but not the impact or then the little head gets crushed. Okay, so look, cool, eh? That side's cool and this side's cool. Now, it's sitting up a little bit. These hammer rivets are just a little bit big for this uh, particular one. I should probably use something smaller, but I'm going with it. So I'll finish these two sides. The truly wonderful thing about hammer rivets is that once you know how to use them, you can create amazing accessories for your Harley Davidson. Nothing says, shove over, honey, I'm coming through, like a custom riveted deluxe leather solo saddle with a matching fork bag. Okay, so I've got the little hem done on my little screw po pocket happening here, and um, that's coming along nicely. Now, I just wanted to show you how to do the um, pouch pocket, because it's a little bit of a different technique. For one thing, you've cut the pouch itself wider, so we have to pinch it. All right, so I'll rivet right there, and then you work carefully underneath the fold up the side and rivet all the way up to the top, that leaving a little bit because we'll be also hemming that. So I end up with something that looks a lot like this, right? There's the folded over thing and the rivets all up the side. So now I've got, I mean, you could use it just like this, right? But frankly, it just increases the hip thing, okay? So I'm, I'm looking for ways around that, so. What I'll do is use this little awl to sew up the middle. You get out enough thread to do the work, okay, and then a little bit more. You actually have to pull the thread down. There's a, this is the coolest thing actually. It, it, the thread is hiding, well I won't show you right now, but the thread is hiding in there on a little spool. It comes out the side and then you just pull it when you need more and out it comes. The tension's a little bit primitive, but it works. All right, so watch what happens here. You just start it by punching it through like that and pull the thread all the way through. Okay, so now you've got it on the wrong side. Now I go through again and make the stitches nice and big because you, you really, you want more um, space between your stitches than you might think. Okay, then suck that down. Put the end through like this. And now, this is the magical part. Draw that through, keep a fair amount of tension on it, and then look what we got. We got our first stitch. See, cool, eh? Okay, then I just go through again, like that, and suck it back, just like when you're wearing a tight outfit, and pull through, like that. Okay, so I'm gonna go all the way up to the top on this baby, and then the magical part happens where we make these snaps. <laughs> okay, get dressed again. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to use snaps. These things are the best. The way they work is that there are two sections that form the female end, so that's the cap, and it goes on one side, like here, see? And then there's this little spring-loaded bit here, into which fits the opposing male component. And it just fits inside like this. Well, how does it do that, you ask? Because there's those big posts in the way. 
But that's why they sell these things with this little roller thing. So when you put these together and hammer them like this, the brass rolls over under the impact. Okay, so then you get this effect. See, the brass is rolled over in both of those. So if you've got a broken jacket, listen up, because this is gonna teach you to fix that. I'm gonna put one every three inches, so I need to mark that out on my um, thing before I go too much further. And I also have to plug in something that is very, very helpful. Now, I'll bet you you have one of these lying around. Somebody in your family has had one. It's a wood burning kit. I've got the calligraphy tip on it right now, and it's the greatest thing, because when it's hot, I can prepare the whole, instead of using a leather punch, I can just go like this and it just melts through. So it cauterizes the weave of the nylon at the same time that it makes the actual hole. Okay, so I'll measure first and then I'll start drilling those holes. Okay, so my little thing got hot. So um, I'm ready to go. Now, the, these things are so hot, it's just unbelievable. So it just goes through like that, lift the nylon up, and back down again. And that blew the hole in it. So I can go along every one and just mark it like this. And then I'm ready to install my snaps. Sometimes the nylon dries or hardens up a little bit too narrow. So you got to ream and bore a little bit, OK? So the belt gets all the males, okay? The whole belt is ringed with males every three inches. And the pockets have the female end of things. So I'm going to line up my males and just wail on them. Come on, little fella. You can do it. It's crowning. Yes. There you are, okay? Then this guy goes on top like this. I'm actually gonna come over here and use my shoe jack at this point, because I don't wanna blow this. This is a, a, an antique that I found, and um, it's not supposed to be an anvil, but it works as an anvil. There's the baby anvil on top of it. This thing sits like this. I use this little punchy thing. And See, I'm just going to put the punch on that brass fence that wants to roll and whack it. There, see, it's ready. So I'll put three of those on, then I'll test it out on my first pouch. The beauty of it is that when you're having an off day, you can still go into denial. You convince yourself that things are going great. You even look forward to the smug feeling of contentment you'll have when your job is complete. But later, you realize that it was this kind of cockiness that led to the big screw up. Okay. Okay, so I finished my belt and um, I put too many of these things on, and now I can't get it tight enough. It's too loose. But I can show you how to take one of those off in a second. But I'm just testing out. I've actually put the female snaps on now just to test my pockets. So I can line them up and just make sure they fit. That one's good. That. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'll be showing you how to remove snaps a little sooner than I thought because I put them on the wrong side. This happens so easily, though. They went in so well. They're <laughs> so backwards. Oh. OK, these are tongue and groove pliers. Remember the name. OK, so I'm going to cinch them on like that. And uh, yeah, that's got it. See? So that's your answer if you blow one of those, or several, as I myself have done. OK, so I'll just get them off the pocket here, too. And then I'll, uh, I'll show you how to put them on right.
Okay, so let's see if that works. Huh? What did I tell you? Okay, so let's hope the rest are okay. Very good. Okay, I have another problem here. Yeah, I do, I do. Okay, I'm admitting it. If you start, start hyperventilating and throwing tools, it could be time to take a break. Or you could be just hitting your stride. Or you could be in your midlife crisis. I'm not sure which it is, but I gotta tell you, I'm hotter than a fire pit right now. Okay, so, and it could just be humiliation. So I'm ready to put the last, um, this side I did it right. So the female's going in this little hole here. Then I'm gonna move on, I'm putting that aside for now, I've had just about enough of the snaps. Let's just move on to something else. All right, here is this big fat piece of leather that I got from the shoe findings place. It's very thick leather because it's going to be supporting a hammer hook and the hammer hook is heavy. Now the hammer hook is made from quarter inch copper flexible tubing. Okay, it looks like this. Now you might want to use pliers to bend it, but <laughs> if you're in the kind of mood I'm in, you just use your bare hands, okay, because it's just that that time of life. Okay, there. That's all it takes. See, it's like a Hulk Hogan moment for yourself, all right? So then you use a tube cutter or a, a pipe cutter to get rid of it, okay? Just score it and cut it off, all right? Then you take it over to your little um, anvil and hammer it down with the ball peen hammer and then drill holes in this with a, with a normal old bit, okay? Now I'm ready to affix it to this thing with hammer rivets, but I also want to cut two slices. See on my finished belt, I have two slices cut in the leather, and they're a little bit tricky. You have to use chisels to do that, okay? Chisels like this. And these ones are really sharp, so I don't even need to, um, I've got to measure how, how, where's my belt? You don't actually have to pound these chisels with a hammer, you just need to push them into the leather. Okay, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be right across here that the belt has to go through and right under here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a chisel and push it into the leather. It bites all the way through. Do the same on the bottom. And then just use a wider chisel to work out the sides until I've got the whole thing and I can just pop out that tab of leather in between. Okay, so that's how that works. So I'm just gonna finish chiseling out these belt holes and then I'm going to punch holes using my leather punch for where I'm gonna wanna hammer rivet this piece to my leather patch. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm almost there. See, this is the hammer hook, and I just feed the little post up through, then slide the little cap on like this, like so. And I'm actually not using that convex thing because I want these to really sink in. I'm not using that little um, press stud tool, okay? That's the name for them, okay? That baby's on, it's not going anywhere. This is on. Gotta uh, put the final pocket on, but first I gotta, oh, the, the, the excitement is mounting. And something's gotta get mounted here because, oh baby, okay, we're there. Oh, except for my final pocket, which snaps on beautifully after a little work. And then finally, the triumphant moment when you drop your hammer into your hammer hook. Cool, eh? Okay, so the ultra suede version is very nice. These rabbit ears I'm gonna trim off and cauterize. Now, there, I'm not the only one making tool belts here. There's a woman named Jackie Hillchuck who makes these very pretty um, gardening belts and tool belts for women. 
And she uses mostly material. If you're a little intimidated by the leather factor, you can go with material. But the main thing is that you, you give yourself some options because, you know, this one has a cell phone holder, huh? When you're out in the garden or uh, working on the shingling or whatever you happen to be doing. Well, now, canvas works, you know, you don't have to go with the leather thing. And then we've got the Cordura nylon version here too. So that's a good thing to know about. Actually, if you want to make chaps for Halloween or a, a leather apron or um, maybe a collar for your dog, now you can because you know how. If you've always secretly pictured yourself as a dangerous leather-clad vixen, now's your chance. Get some friends together to chip in on the tools, then invite everyone over for Mai Tais and hammer riveting. It's a nice earthy twist on the old sewing bee. Sure, a leather camisole and matching tap pants may be impractical and hot to wear, but look at the bright side. They won't be on long. 